Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tea Time History Chat Live. I hope you're all doing well. Let me know in the comments where you're joining us from. Today, I'm going to give you a bit of a review. This is the first one um, back since I was off last week taking the Anne Boleyn tour. So I'm going to let you know how that went. Plus, I've got a new book for... Um, well, actually, I've got a couple of books, new books that I picked up on tour, which are very exciting. One which is brand, brand new and one which isn't even out yet. So whatever comes before being brand new. And also the next book in Book Club. I have a few thank yous also um, to people and a new video for you that hopefully you will enjoy as well. So welcome. Um, also welcome if you're listening back on the podcast um, I'm streaming live on Facebook and YouTube today. I may well post this up on Instagram uh, shortly, but we're not live there today um, for various reasons. Well, for one reason, I don't have the stand. So if you have joined us over from uh, me over here uh, on YouTube or Facebook from Instagram, hi, thank you for making the switch. And uh, hi, Lisa, I can see you there already. How are you? Um, so today, Let's 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 talk about um, a little bit about what happened last week, or a lot about what happened last week. So it was Rebecca. Hello, finally made it on time. How are you? I've made it on time today as well, just about. So that is also good. Um, yeah, I'm talking about Anne Boleyn. We had the anniversary of uh, her execution last week. And um, good morning, Deborah, over on Facebook. Hi, Marianne. Um, welcome. So, yeah, so last week uh, it was the uh, anniversary, hi, Heidi, um, on, sorry, on Friday, yes, of the execution of Anne Boleyn. I was there with the Anne Boleyn tour group, which I take every year. We do, um, we do a, a sort of commemoration, a, a, a celebration of Anne's life and her legacy um over five days so we 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 um meet up on the 16th of may and uh, and we say our goodbyes on the 20th of may and on the 19th of may each year we go to the tower of london which of course is the place of execution of anne boleyn and it was so busy this year <laughs> like i've never seen the tower that that busy um uh, yes, Rebecca, of course, because you're in New York, aren't you? She's still in the UK. So Rebecca was on the tour with me last week and um, and so is still on UK time. Is on UK time because she's still here. Oh, how is York? I, I still haven't made York was a pandemic was a 2020 trip um, for me that was cancelled and I haven't managed to um, to redo it yet. But yes, yeah, so the tower on the 19th. Um, well, yeah, it was the busiest I've ever, ever seen it. Uh, I think there's a bit of a hangover from the coronation still. People still hear from the coronation, people wanting to see the crown jewels. And, of course, I think Anne is better and better known. Um, hello, Renee. Hello, Melissa. Hi, Jenna. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think Anne is becoming better and better known. So it's... You know, you'll you'll go there on the nineteenth, and you might bump into other people who were there. So we also saw Dr. Cat, Catherine Brooks was there. Um, so yeah, there's a few people. Now, of course, we had Gareth Russell with us, who was fabulous. Um, hi, uh, Renee over there in Indiana. Um, how are you doing? Oh, Melissa, how are you? Yeah, have you got home uh, okay? Yes, um, Melissa was on tour with us as well. So we've got Melissa and Rebecca. Hi. Can you believe it's been a how, well that we were together this time last week? It's um it feels it feels weird um that we're all back. Or oh, actually, Rebecca, you're still on your trip, but I'm back home. Melissa's back home. Um, and the the tower had a buzz about it. London was incredibly busy as well. So, um, but that was just one of the days. Uh, that we had and when we came back because we we stay at Hever Castle for the entirety of um of the uh Anne Boleyn tour and when we got back I uh had a little whisper in my ear that despite us being back late that the castle were going to allow the group to go if we wanted to which of course we did go and see Anne Boleyn's book of hours which is in uh, the castle She's got two there usually. One was actually at Hampton Court Palace, which we got to see the day before. Um, and and her, her 
there's there's the uh, printed one which is uh, has her inscription has one of her inscriptions in it that is opened to that page only on the 19th of May only on the um, the date of her execution the date of her death so the group were able to go again the castle was closed to everybody so we got to go in on uh, from our own private entrance in fact uh, through to the castle to see Anne Boleyn's book of hours with her inscription with her own handwriting in it so that was that was incredible and then we had a barbecue and Jay Britton who's the Tudor songbook um on if you look at her up on YouTube Instagram or Facebook she sang for us and she sings uh she sings music from the Tudor court. So music Anne Boleyn would have recognised. In fact, some that is even attributed to Anne. We hear about Henry VIII being a bit of a composer, wannabe composer and, and things that he, you know, the tunes that he may or may not have um, uh, created, written. Well, Anne also has t- um, tunes to the right word, uh, attributed to her. So that's the music that... Um, that Jay sings dressed as Anne Boleyn and with a lutenist accompaniment. So it was, it was, it was beautiful, but that was the final day. The day before that we were at Hampton Court Palace met at the gates by Tracy Borman, who led us through to a room, which isn't on the visitor route. It's, um, it's in fact the room where Jane Seymour gave birth. Um, quite possibly, um, in, uh, or quite possibly Anne Boleyn may have miscarried in that room as well. Um, so, but Jane Seymour gave birth there. Of course, she dies there um, uh, later on, a few days later. And that's where Tracy Borman gave us her talk. Um, uh, uh, Katie, who's, who's been on, on the tour before, the book of ours is great, but the real star of the Hoover tour is the pink Aster bathroom. Yeah, so, <laughs> oh yeah, we'll get to that. But so Tracy gave us, um (laughs) Melissa that bathroom the the pink bathroom for anyone who doesn't know so um, if you do a hidden heaver tour which again we we do as part of our tour you get to see parts of the castle at heaver castle that aren't um on the visitor route one of which is Lady Astor's bathroom it is the the brightest pink you have ever seen everything everything is pink the walls the floor the bath the toilet the weighing scales, um, everything. And then with gold fleur de lis, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Um, uh, but the, um, so the talk though, that Tracy Borman gave to us was on her new book only just published. So she brought copies along for the group, anyone who wanted one and signed them for us. And it was the first time she's given the talk, uh, on, on Anne and Elizabeth. So we were very fortunate. The day it was, in fact, it was the day before. It was the day before this went uh, was published, I think, or it was on the published day. Um, so we were we were so fortunate. Tracy did us the talk, and and we have the books. So all all signed for us, um, which is so fabulous. So I've still got to get into this one um, because of another book I'm reading at the moment. But I'll tell, I will tell you about that. Um, in a bit because it's it's relevant to everyone especially if you're a patron so um so at Hampton Court we had the talk from Tracy Borman and then we went uh, on a guided uh, tour of the palace by uh, Sarah Slater who is the um she's called Hampton Court tour guide on Instagram she's a white badge guide that means she is specific to the venue and her knowledge is second to none she has helped Gareth Russell who was our tour historian with his new book about the palace because her knowledge is so insane that she she was able to give him notes and and uh, and pointers and such like so so yes so we spent our day at Hampton Court um and then but the first I'm working backwards the first full day we had we spent just at Hever Castle uh people who wanted to dress up so um Melissa you dressed up um if they wanted to dress up as Tudor royalty, uh, Samantha Reese was there to to do that, and we have we have got some fantastic photos. Uh, they're still on my Instagram story, actually. If you um, if you're interested in seeing everybody dressed up, it was amazing. And um, 
and we also took a walk up to uh, St. Peter's, which is the, the church next to Hever. It's just outside Hever Castle's boundary. And that is where Anne and the Boleyn family would have um, would have worshipped on certain days of the year. It's also where Anne's grandmother is, one of her grandmothers is buried. Um, so, uh, and Gareth did us a talk there as well. He's so fabulous. And he did, gave us a talk uh, later on that evening, sort of putting into context the whole, the whole few days, the whole like story, the places we were going and how it fits to Anne's story. Um, now, at the end of the tour, we were um, on the final night, Gareth gave us a second talk and it was a exclusive so um we were all sworn to we couldn't we couldn't video it or anything he read us a chapter from his new book and i've just mentioned it there the palace by gather so this isn't out until august in the uk and december in the rest of the world and he read us the chapter on anne Boleyn at Hever Court, uh, uh, sorry, at Hampton Court Palace, excuse me. Uh, so that was a, so we had two exclusives. We had the talk from Tracy Borman and we had a chapter out of Gareth Russell's book. Uh, Gareth's given me, the, well, he sent me, um, the, this is a limited limited edition proof copy. So this isn't the final copy, um, which I am reading in order to get ready to prepare for my interview with Gareth Russell. So if you are already a patron, which a few of you are, then, uh, so uh, yeah, Jenna and uh, Rebecca, Katie, are you a patron? I can't remember. Um, then you will be able to ask Gareth questions about um, about Hampton Court Palace and about the people who live there. So he's going from Tudors, yeah, from Tudors to Windsors because it first became a royal palace under the time of the Tudors. Um, and it begins actually talking about a ball that Elizabeth II attended two or three days before her own coronation. It's, I can't wait. I'm, I'm only a little way in so far, but I will be... Um, I will be getting it obviously done. But patrons, as always, you will be able to put your questions to Gareth. Um, so I will be, I'll give you a bit of context and I'll be able to um, point you in the direction of what sorts of questions, if that's helpful, because obviously you can't get hold of the book yet. Um, and you can submit those those to Gareth. I'll be interviewing him in the middle of July. So that's all rather fun. Now, Jenna's just said there about um, missing book club um that's we got rained out Saturday oh no for our open day at the fair so it was super busy Sunday and I couldn't break away that's that's fine Jenna we missed you we missed Rebecca too because um Rebecca was in Bath at the time uh Bath as people from the south say I say Bath because I'm not from the south and I uh, couldn't get on the wi-fi could you Rebecca so um pre-ordered the ebook on Amazon Rebecca says now we were given a little top tip from Maria actually um on book club about getting hold of books um so this is a nice top tip for you if you now I haven't tried this myself but um I uh, Maria has told us that if you go to blackwells.co.uk they ship worldwide and you can pre-order the UK version of books, which obviously means that you can get them earlier than you would if you're waiting in the US or Canada. So apparently that works. Hi, Lynn. How are you doing? Um, yeah, so apparently that works. So blackwells.co.uk. I haven't tried it myself, but have a go. It might mean you can get, one, you can get the books earlier. And two, if you're a fan of the UK versions of the books, then um then that is also that is also good melissa waterstones do, do waterstones do it as well okay cool so that's good so there's a few options um but yeah definitely blackwells i know maria's tried and they will send you the uk version so that's cool so book club anyway yes jenna we missed you rebecca we missed you we were talk so the book we've just discussed is blood fire and gold by estelle pronk behind me you can see the stack of books uh that are in book club so we've now done two we've done the titanic um the ship of dreams which is uh gareth whistle's book about the titanic and we've just done estelle pronk's dual biography of elizabeth I and catherine de medici 
uh, de Medici. Someone Italian tell me how I should, <laughs> how am I supposed to pronounce that? Um, so we've just finished that. So we've done our first two. We're on to our third book. Our third book is, so if you're not a patron and you want to get involved in book club, this is our next uh, book. We've all just started this, The House of Dudley by Dr. Joanne Paul. I have an interview actually with Joanne available on my YouTube if you want to watch that. Um, in fact, I, have in, I just thought I have an interview with Estelle about her book and I have an interview with Gareth about Titanic. <laughs> nice. Just wind it all neatly up together there. So The House of Dudley by Joanne looks at the, 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 the sorry, the Dudley um, from the time of Henry VII through to Elizabeth I. And it's there's there's lots of, of interest in this book. One of the things I found most interesting is when you look at it overall, you can see how the fortunes of the Dudleys, in terms of how they're interacting with the Tudor monarchs and so what favours they're getting, but also just life, what life's thrown at them, mirrors the Tudors that they serve. So Edmund Dudley rises to prominence at the time of Henry VII, who clearly has also just risen to prominence, right through to um, to uh, Robert Dudley, who dies without heirs a few years before. Wait, well, does he die in 15, when did he die? 1588? Have I just made that up? Somewhere around there. So dies um, about 15 years before Elizabeth, but dies without heirs she dies without heirs it's like it's 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 really almost spooky how how the fortunes um and how life treats them um mirror each other but it's it's really good it's i explained um I, I've, I've come up with a nice analogy that i keep using so excuse me if you've heard this before but the house study not only do you learn about the dudleys Including a, including a Dudley son, by the way, who I didn't even know existed and was incredibly significant. Um, but we'll we'll get on to that in the book. Fifteen eighty seven, Melissa. Thank you. Um, I knew it was t around the time of the uh, um, Armada, isn't it? So, I th in fact, I think it was from T T Tilbury that Robert Dudley decides to go to take the waters at Buxton. I can't remember. Anyway, he's on his way and he and he he, he dies. Anyway, sorry, the house does so yeah, you're learning about the Dudley family, but you're learning about the Tudors that they served. Now, of course, the Tudor family story is one that we feel quite familiar with, although I would also point you to another book that isn't in book club at the moment, which is just called The Tudor Story. I think uh, it's by Leander Delisle pick that one up if you've not read that um because it's fabulous hi melissa melissa also was on tour with us oh we've got a little mini reunion going on in the comments that's fantastic hello how are you doing <laughs> i like your profile picture already updated to uh, melissa looking absolutely incredible in a red tudor uh gown with the hood it looks amazing but yeah so the house deletes you're looking at the tudors it's like looking into a familiar room but through a different window there you go there's my analogy that I, I like to use because it is familiar but you can look at it from a different direction which actually is a little bit like Estelle's book with blood fire and gold looking at Elizabeth I in a different direction uh, you know from a different direction from from the French perspective anyway so the house of Dudley is our next book in book club we will be meeting on the 16th of July all the meetings are a Sunday they're seven o'clock my time which makes it afternoonish, I think, in America, and um, so we're if you and and around about the same time if you're in Europe, slightly early, I think well, you'll be slightly later. <laughs> I don't know how the clocks work. So, if you're interested, book club is part of my Patreon, so you can you can join. Um, oh, I need to remember the address. So it's Patreon dot com forward slash British History. So you can you can join there. It's five pounds a month for for patron and book club is included. And you do you get to do things like ask questions of guests, for example, 
as I've mentioned, Gareth, about his book about the palace. I will be interviewing him soon. Oh, and I, and I am about to set a date with... Morning, Colleen. Very early there, I'm sure. Uh, over there in California. I'm about to set a date with Jonathan Foyle, Dr. Jonathan Foyle, who spoke on our uh, tour actually this year and um, twice last year. He is an he's an architectural historian. He was curator of buildings at Hampton Court Palace actually for quite a while. He keeps discovering new Tudor artifacts. Uh, he was behind identifying the marriage bed of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. He has since uh, taken to scouring online auction sites for pieces and finding lots. So I'm going to be interviewing him about the kind of things that he's got, um, that he's finding. Um, and um, so that'll be, that'll be an interesting interview. So yeah, so anyone who's in my page and you get to, um, you get to ask your own questions. So, um, so that's all fun. Actually, I've got two thank you, uh, two welcomes. Benjamin and Inessa have both joined Patreon in the last week, so thank you very much for that and welcome. Uh, I have, oh yes, I will mention this. So, the Amberlin tour for next year is already sold out completely. I have a waiting list for the Anne Boleyn tour in May 2025. I already have double the numbers on the waiting list than I have spaces available <laughs> which is fantastic for me but obviously that means some people are going to miss out now the best way to um to get the tour you want is to be a patron you get seven days to book before before anyone else is allowed to book on even if you've gone on the waiting list patrons trump everybody so you um yeah you get seven days to book onto a tour um so that's cool. The um, but I, there are going to be other tours. It's not just the Anne Boleyn tour. I have two. I have a weekend tour and a tour in September next year about to be released. I'm just finalising some of the detail. Um, the weekend will be the 28th till 30th of June. So if you want to like, if you're thinking of travelling to the UK or thinking of doing a tour, then you can at least know the dates and, I'll, and you can pencil them in and see if they work for you. 28th to 30th of June is going to be a weekend, uh, so sort of short tour. And then in September, the uh, 20th till the 27th of September, it's a bit of a longer one because we're doing some fantastic stuff, then that will be available soon as well. So anyway, just keep those dates in mind. Um. I have another video that I have made available on YouTube. It was a patron only one, um, but it's over 12 years old. So I've at 12 years, I haven't been doing it quite that long, actually nearly that long, 12 months old anyway. Um, so I have released it um, and it is on, it's an introduction to the Anglo-Saxon period. Now, any of you who've been following me for a while know that I've, I've really got into the Anglo-Saxon period. I'm really, really enjoying uh, enjoying it. I did an interview with uh, Elizabeth Norton about Ethelfrith, um, which is worth watching. If you're in my Patreon, you remember we went to Odo's Chapel and um, the Abbey at Deerhurst, which is Anglo-Saxon. So you can still see, you can still visit, go into um, an Anglo-Saxon Abbey church and an Anglo-Saxon chapel. Then you get The Last Kingdom <laughs> on, was it Netflix? The Last Kingdom, um, with Alexander Draymond as Uhtred. Now, historical drama has its place. <laughs> and that place was firmly uh, cemented in my heart. Uh, now It's now all completely finished, but if you want to like a little look into the Anglo-Saxon period, it's very interesting. There's not a lot of <laughs> Renee's like, yes, Last Kingdom. We don't have a lot of remains from Anglo Saxon times. They come after the Romans, they come before the Normans. Because they built in wood, they, um, I suppose, if you want to be sort of modern day, maybe looking at it, a uh, way of looking at it, is they, they, were, they, they lived with the natural world. 
they use natural materials um so so anyway we don't have a huge amount left however we did start to get the building of churches abbeys in stone which are the things we have left so that's that's quite exciting um anyway so but it's quite a complicated period so I've done my best to try and explain kind of how it's how 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 we move from smaller kingdoms through to a united Engerland, England, which then is there for William the Conqueror to come over and conquer. He conquers an already united um, England and well, Wales its own principality, but kind of linked to England. And well, no. That sort of comes a bit later. And then and then so anyway, I've done my best to try and explain it because it is highly it is a bit complicated. So that is on that's available on YouTube. Um, so it's called an introduction to Anglo-Saxon England, I think something like that. So, so I've, I've done my best to simplify it. Um, yeah, it's a bit difficult. I've also I'm doing my best. For ready for tonight's history after dark if anyone is around tonight 8 15 p.m uk time we have history after dark and i'm talking uh well sorry me and the girls so me dr cat and Catherine brooks are talking about richard neville <coughs> excuse me warwick the kingmaker i am dealing with his early life and trying to get my head around it in a way that I can explain there's one thing reading it it's it's another thing trying to explain it so um yeah after we get off here today that is what I'm going to be going through again like over and over again Marianne favorite period of history is that the Anglo-Saxon period sorry I've just because I've just scooted off into Wars of the Roses there I am um, Anglo-Saxon the Vikings I'm going to be looking to do a tour actually up north uh on around the vikings around anglo-saxon england so if you're interested in that let me know drop me a line um rebecca can make that one too yay i'm in york and i'm still watching <laughs> history after dark you can't miss it you can't miss it it's going to be fun it's going to be fun this we we missed last week because obviously i was on tour but we did do a bit of a live from the tower of london which rebecca Becky managed to get some fabulous photos. It was so interesting seeing what we look like when we're live from an outsider's perspective, you know, from, from like watching us as a three, slowly edging away from each other as well so that um, because we could hear each other the back. Um, yeah, what if you call it? Feedback. Marianne, yes, Anglo-Saxon. Oh, we're, we're, we're there, we're there. Becky, please put me on the waiting list for the Viking and... AS tour. What was the AS? Oh, Anglo Saxon tour. Sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Yeah. Well, fabulous. Yay. We can get there. We can, I can get. So I'm working really hard. Um, that's why I haven't got a particular sort of uh, uh, topic to talk about today. Because I, since I've been back, I've been working really hard on getting uh, next year's tours ready to sell so like I say the Anne Boleyn one it, it, it went on sale and is already sold out um so anyway I'm I'm working on the others and I'm looking forward to 2025 as well so I'm hoping to be able to give you a really good idea of of what's coming up and there might be additions to those as we go if there's the demand so that will be that will be um I, I love doing it it's quite a lot of um mind-boggling logistics but uh but I do enjoy it. I do enjoy it. So I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover um, or could think of to cover today. So it's a little bit of a short one. But just as a recap, if you are interested in coming and discussing the House of Dudley with us, it's a great group. We have we have a really lovely discussion. Um, it's really quite fun. It, well, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. If you join Patreon, by the way, you will be able to see recordings of um, both the last meetings so you can get an idea if you want to join us <laughs> you will you will you will you will but really looking forward to getting into the house of Dudley with uh by Joanne um everybody I 
Oh, thank you. Becky says, Philippa does a great job preparing and executing the tours. Thank you. It's my passion. It's my passion. And everyone, uh, yeah, I, don't, I, I do not take for granted how how much what I'm giving you know I'm I'm just I'm providing something that people are really looking for you know looking for, to do and it's, it makes me very happy so I take that very seriously um oh Lynn as well yes because Lynn's been on tour with me well I mean I'm seeing some some of you um well some people who've been on tour last year back with me in um in a few weeks time because I have the private life oh thank you I have the uh, the private life of Anne Boleyn tour coming up on the 29th of June and uh we've closed bookings for that one it's only a small one we've only got um in fact Katie Katie you're on that aren't you and um there's only a few of us it's going to it's going to be really intimate and lovely um and then I'm just taking the, the oh, I'm about to close bookings for the Elizabeth I and Mary Queen of Scots tour in September. Both of those, by the way, well, it's kind of irrelevant for the private life one, but the, oh, literally, Renee, Mary Queen of Scots and Elizabeth I this September, I'm closing bookings for that in a couple of weeks. So if, and I do have some spaces left. Um, reason being, I have to, uh, I have to confirm number of, hotel rooms and things like that for uh that far in advance so if you anyone if you do Renee uh, anyone else wants to be on the Elizabeth the first and Mary Queen of Scots tour like I say it's not being repeated and actually there are element there are elements in the tours that sometimes are repeated because they they are linked into you know something relevant to another tour to another topic but we have got exclusive access to the Lord Leicester Hospital this September we won't get that again that's a favour uh, because the tour was already existing and they said, would you like to come and see us? And I said, yes, but we can only come on this date. Oh, we're closed. We'll open just for you. So that is a one-off. Uh, we've also got exclusive access to Harvington Hall. We've got exclusive access to Tutbury Castle. Um, it's uh, We've got Gareth Russell as our tour historian. Leslie Smith is doing performances of, as Elizabeth I and... Um, and of um, uh, Mary Queen of Scots. And we have Estelle Peronk coming to talk to us as well. Um, uh, Renee, well, I'll have other tours in 2024, but not looking to do the Elizabeth and Mary Queen of Scots one in 2024. No, and not unless there's sort of a sudden flurry of people wanting to book it. <laughs> um, oh, you're going to Scotland though. Well, that will be very nice. I'm jealous. I haven't got up to Scotland for a long time. So I'll be looking, that, that'll be amazing. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested, drop me a line, let me know, um, because I will have to close bookings for that soon. Everyone, it's been a delight to be back with you. Um, some of you have only just, just been away from and it's um so thank you so much for coming on. Um, I'm glad to see your onward travels have been um uh, safe and um pleasant um uh rebecca i'm so sad i'll i'll miss the hospital i have a picture at the front from when i visited in 2015 yes the hospital, the hospital will be involved so the lord leicester hospital becky's talking about there will be in other itineraries as is um as is relevant the difference will be this year we've got exclusive access so they're only opening for us and it is um, uh, the um, the boss of the place is taking us around. <laughs> so, okay, everyone, I keep saying I'm going to leave you be. I will now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for popping over to Facebook and YouTube to watch. And uh, if you're around tonight, 8.15, History After Dark and uh, Richard Neville, uh, Earl of Warwick is getting the had treatment tonight. So let's see how that goes. All right, everyone. Take care. I'll see you all later. <laughs>